All right. Um, I'm just going to give a quick demo about threading. Um, um, Matt just thought it might be interesting for people who haven't used it before on the ESP32. So it's, um, yeah, just today actually I was working on it and I got threading work with external PS RAM um, and just fixed a few bugs. So this, this is just an ESP32 board. Um, yeah, a Lowland 32 Pro. Just to show you that it has um, so yeah, I have almost three megabytes of, of heap, so that's got external RAM there. Um, and to use threading, so in, in normal Python, threading is made up, there's underscore thread, which is the sort of low level threading module, and then there's threading, uh, which is the higher level wrapper around that. So that's not um, implemented in MicroPython at the moment, just underscore thread is, but underscore thread gives you all the primitives you need. And the primitives really are just, um, so allocate lock and start a new thread are the main two things you need to do anything. Um, and the threading module, if that was implemented, would give you sort of more things like semaphores and mutexes and things, a bit more convenient ways of doing things. But you can do everything with a lock and, a th and starting a new thread. So to do that, you just make, so say I make a thread with an argument x um, while true to print thread x and then say sleep for x seconds. Uh, and then so we start a new thread, so thread, so th is the name of my thread function, and then I have to pass it the arguments that will be passed to that function when it's, when it's started. So we need one argument, so say we'll pass three, it used to be a tuple. So this will start the, this function here with an argument of three, so it should print three and it should take three seconds in between that. Okay, so that's what it's doing. So it's running in the background. So I've still got the prompt here and I can still do things whilst that threading is running in the background. And then I can, let's try and start a new thread. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so now I've got thread three and four running in, in the background in parallel. So, and we'll do, let's see if we can pass. Oh dear. <laughs> I made two thread fours, I think, now. Yeah. Um, so let's try 0.1. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. annoying at all. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> now there's a 0.1 thread, a two fours and a three. So you can see, yeah, this is it. Um, well, that's pretty cool. Make it, you can make it's threads cool. like this. Um, so if we press Control D, it will do a soft reset, and <coughs> yeah, okay, it'll just kill all the threads, so you can very easily play around. Um, there's actually no way to kill a thread. There's no, no way in Python to do it, so there's no way in MicroPython either. If you really wanted to do it, you, well, you need to make your thread function actually kill itself when you signal it somehow. So, and then you've got to, that's what locks are for. So, where we've got to start again here, um, thread. So, um, if I do thread allocate lock, so I can do acquire. Um, and release, and that will be done in a synchronized way. So it's, that's an atomic operation to acquire and release, and you can use that to to do certain things. So if we wanted to make sure, so let's try write another function, um, and so x and l say a time and a list while true with Oh, L is lock. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's that's, a, that's okay. So with lock, <laughs> I'll just change the example. So with lock, uh, so it's like a context manager. So now this with block will only be executed within a lock acquired, and when that with is finishes, it will release the lock. So we can say for um, I in range X, print I. So now. Um, so, thread x and uh, so i 
Let's do R percent D and percent D percent I and X. So okay. And then we'll just sleep say I don't I just want to sleep for say five seconds so everything because we'll get a chance to do stuff. Okay, and we'll time. So at least now it's trying to print lots of things, it'll treat many numbers in a row, but hopefully it'll do this in a synchronized block so that we don't have interleaved print statements. Um, start a new thread. Okay, so we want to pass, so we'll call this thread four, so it'll print four things, and we need to pass it the lock. Or it's a global variable, but it doesn't matter, we can also pass it to a global variable. Okay, and now, so we'll see that run again in five seconds. So now I'll try another one that prints, say, 1 to 6, and, uh -oh. no, okay, yeah, there we go, uh, 6, okay, so, oh, but these are not going to run, yeah, we might not see the chance when they run together, 4, then 6. Okay, let's try and make some more. So, 10. So that's 10, 4, 6. Okay, because they've got such a, a long delay between them, you're not seeing yet with the effective synchronization, but you'll never see anything interleave because they're acquiring that lock before they print. Um, so, yeah, if you leave that running, you'll see it do that same thing over and over. And did you have dot whatever release? No, so it's Was using it a context in? manager. Okay. So I, I can explain. Um, so, yeah. We'll just leave that running. Uh, okay. Like you didn't type release, I don't think. No, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, I, if I have, to, I have to, I can't really stop this, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, if you acquire the lock, it'll stop it. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's do that, let's do that. Uh, L dot acquire. True. Okay, yeah. so... <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> that's, that's well. <laughs> good idea. So, yeah, so in this lock, you can see the methods it has acquire release, whether or not it's locked. Yep. And then enter and exit context manager methods. Okay. So when you have a with block, when a with is started, it calls the enter method of that object that you do it with. And when the with block exits, it calls the release the exit, which will be alias to release when it finishes. So it's like a constructive destructive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like but that. it's also protects against anything exception. So if an exception happens within the block, it still releases the lock yeah. before it, the exception propagates out. With is also used for like opening files, so you're guaranteed they're closed and doing lots of other things that, that you'd like. So in this case, the lock is being released and acquired. That's such a good trick to... <laughs> yeah, and now they all want to come back quickly. Yeah, so they were all they sort of synchronized yeah. at that point, because they're all waiting on that mutex, or that it's a mutex behind the scenes, to, um, to be released before they can start. That's cool. All right, well, anyway, that, that's all I wanted to show. So you can play around with this and, um, yeah, it's another way to write, write code, really. Threads implemented with free Atos time slicing on the ESP32? Yeah, so the, they're implemented under the hood with free Atos because that's how the ESP32 works. Mm -hmm. So you can't make an infinite number of, well, you could, I don't know how many you can make, but they all take a bit of memory. So the stack, uh, <laughs> so in thread you can, got the stack size of the thread, which is oh, currently a default, who knows what it is. But you can set it to be, you know, 4K or 16K or whatever you like, depending on how much you need. But then, you know, if you create 10, stack, 10 threads with a 4K stack, then that's 40K just for your thread stack. So you've got to be, you got to just know what you're doing there. Um, but yeah, so, and as Matt alluded to, there's a time slice of 10 milliseconds per thread. So that's why when they're running, so, um, it's pretty responsive here, but if I let this thread start running, um, it 
it's a little bit slower and a bit laggy. That's because I only get 10 millisecond slices and then the threads all run and then it comes back to the prompt. So you could, you can change that time slice to be like one millisecond to make it a bit more responsive, but then you've got more overhead with the switching because it happens more often. So it's a trade off. Um, yeah. And so because of the free RTOS, it's only on the ESP32? It works on the Unix port as well, and it does work on the Pi board, which has its own native sort of uh, threading mechanism. Cool. Yeah. Is um, it the same underscore thread? Yeah, exactly the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly the same. So yeah, I mean, I probably should have demonstrated the Pi board, but it's, it's exactly, it works exactly the same. Yeah, it's, it's not same it's thing. not enabled by default. Mm. I, I mean, yeah. So, but it is in the ESP32. But it's exactly the same. Cool. How does it interact with the cores on ESP32? It's only running on single core mode. I was trying to get dual core mode working today, but I didn't work out how to do it. But it would, I, that, that would be the next step. Um, but yeah, remember, when in threading mode, you've got access to the common heap, so all your threads can share the same data structures, but that means they have to be careful. Now, atomic operations like inserting into a list or inserting into a dictionary are atomic operations. Mm -hmm. So you don't get a corrupted like system or a seg fault because you're to trying to insert a list insert into a list at the same time. It will still work, um, but you don't know who goes first sort of thing. And if um, maybe deleting from a dictionary and someone else is reading, you might you'll see inconsistent. You won't see an inconsistent dictionary, but you'll see maybe inconsistent state what your program expects. So if you are using shared data structures, you will need to use locks to make sure that they are in a consistent state. Um, but this is just a general threading sort of caveats that you have to work, work around. But you shouldn't be able to crash it like <laughs> by doing things. You could you can append to arrays and do everything and you shouldn't be able to crash it because those low level operations are all atomic from res with respect to threading because of the global interpreter lock. Yeah, which is an API. Yeah. So, uh, the, the threading library you mentioned before, is it just a matter of time or is there, is there actually a technical reason? I think, no, no, I think you could even run the threading library from Python because it's implemented in pure Python. Yeah, it's all pure Python. 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 So, you probably even bring concurrent futures just fine if you've yeah, got a port with enough space. So that's all just pure Python. Um, so, because it's just, use, it, yeah, so all it needs is underscore thread. Well, mm -hmm. no, not all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's a few things there. Yeah, okay. I, actually, I think it's always, it's not implemented in C, it's implemented in Python. Mm -hmm. So, and you've got like SEM4. So, um, feels so like a fairly natural a fit for MicroPython lib where half those other dependencies might already be in MicroPython lib or could be added there. Yeah. Bring, bring it in that way on demand. Yeah, so. Yeah, this this can be a pure Python library as long as the other ones are. The yeah. other can, the yeah, other depends yeah, on the best. Yeah, but this this, this could be so. cut down maybe and made a bit more efficient. But yeah, there's no technical reason why you can't have this one. So we leave you alone for a half hour or so. Yeah, I'll do something else. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Okay. All right. That's it. I hope. Mm. So, thanks. Thank you. Cool. Thank you.